anesthesia is drug-induced loss of consciousness in the case of general anesthesia. We deliver anesthesia in the hope that there will be no nausea, no vomiting, and on the morning of surgery, the patient will meet their anesthesiologist, and uh, there will be a, a preoperative review one last time of the medications that the patient is taking, any allergies to medications, and anesthetic history, if the patient has had any difficulties with anesthesia in the past. Ambulatory patients are usually escorted into the operating room and the intravenous is started at that time. Monitoring is applied, an EKG, continuous, is applied, blood pressure, and a pulse oximeter, which measures an oxygen concentration. The patient is then usually given a small dose of a benzodiazepine, an anti-anxiety medication, which begins the process of the drug-induced state. At that point, patients are usually more relaxed, they, their facial expressions change, and uh, they no longer feel threatened. Patients often are, are relieved to no longer be in an anxious state, and at that point, many of them just fall asleep. So following an anti-anxiety medication, we usually administer a little bit of a narcotic, a small dose of a rapidly cleared narcotic, uh, very potent, and, and then a sleep dose of a sedative hypnotic. That is usually enough to induce a moderate to deep sedation. And the surgeon, if the agreement has been to perform the case under local with sedation, will then inject local anesthesia. The patient does not feel the injection, and at that point the patient is numb and the surgery proceeds with a patient who's pain-free. Patients do worry about having a tube placed in their airway, and many patients express concern over this. However, the patients are always induced by intravenous medication into an unconscious state before a tube is placed in the throat. The tube is removed while the patient is still asleep. And so patients don't realize that a tube is a safety measure that when offered is, is being offered because the anesthesiologist feels that it is necessary. And in the case of ambulatory anesthesia, most patients are not intubated. The cases are short, their patients are breathing on their own, they are sedated to the point where they are minimally conscious or unconscious and pain-free, and there really is no need to assist ventilation or control their breathing. However, in long cases, we do control respirations because patients do not breathe well under deep sedation and that can be tolerated for a short period of time. They can be assisted, but over the course of two hours, it's important to ventilate the lungs.